Hey guys, uh, my name is Mr. Riz and I'm going to be your teacher for Intro to Programming. Uh, I made a video here just to help you explain what this class is going to be about and I got a PowerPoint to go along with that. So I will open that up right here. There we go. So let's, see. Again, let's start this up. So this is uh, Project Lead the Way Computer Science Intro to Programming and I'm Mr. Riz and this is room 508. So what is this class? The intro to computer programming class. Students will be using a seamless transition from text-based programming uh, with languages such as Python to create apps and develop websites and learn how computers work together in the design and practice. So uh, this class is all gonna be text-based, so we'll be using coding. Uh, we will use Python as our primary language and there's different ways we can use that. There's the Amazon workspace that we can use, which we probably won't because it's been really messy over the summer. So uh, I don't think you guys have been keeping up to it, but Amazon has changed a lot of their services around with the Amazon workspace. Um, it's no longer um, that they have Amazon workspace education uh, practice that they're pretty much dissolving. So we will use another website called ripple.it. So this class is gonna be kind of weird a little bit. You'll have a Google classroom that I have to have We'll have a learning management system on Canvas to organize everything, uh, but then we will use ripple.it to pretty much turn in the majority of our assignments in here. Uh, so it's going to be kind of fun, kind of interesting, um, but a little bit different, which is that's what coding in is. It's constantly changing. All right, so who uses Python? So these are all the industries that right now are using Python as their primary coding language. So you can see Google, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Netflix, Dropbox, Reddit. Have you ever heard of any of these? Uh, so you can see Python is uh, a large primary language that a lot of companies are using. Uh, they're not the only ones, but it's a great one. Once you learn the fundamentals too, it's not too hard to transition to Java, which is an older language, or to other types of maybe even engineering programs. Uh, so Python's a pretty great one just to get your feet wet and uh, learn. So last year I had the students who took this class um, take a survey and explain what their thoughts of it since it was a brand new class last year. And I think this is some good results here. So uh, I asked the students, would they recommend the students take this class? You can see the majority of the kids, so they would recommend, highly recommend or somewhat recommend. So um, especially if you are interested in any type of computing, uh, this is a class just to let you guys know. And now some kids might have said, yes, I recommend that you take this so you can learn that you don't like it, but there we go. I do have a couple kids that weren't afraid to admit that they were neutral on this or they do not recommend this class. And uh, kids you'll probably see next. Okay, so next question was, how would you describe the difficulty of this class? So a couple kids said easy. I'm sure a couple kids have some background and a couple kids did take the uh, CSE class, which is the app making class. Uh, and then a couple kids said, okay, it's not, you know, half the kids said, okay, it's not too easy, it's not too tough, but then you can see a lot of kids said this was difficult or very difficult. So if you are a student that struggles in math, especially when it comes to algebra, this class can be difficult. If you are a freshman that is taking this class uh, first semester, uh, if you are not in honors classes, I would not recommend that you be in here. Uh, we will be making programs to solve algebraic problems as a warm up. And if you don't know how to solve those algebra problems without, it's going to be hard to make one, a program to do that for you. Um, so there is a level of math that you guys will have to um, know. Now, if you're still interested in computer uh, science, I would recommend taking the computer science essentials or CSE class. That is a block based class. So you won't have to know all the coding. You won't have to type. You're going to click and drag things into the right order to build an app. It's very easy. It's like, um, if you think of these, I'm, I'm gonna use my three-year-old as an example here. Uh, Block-based coding is like the mega blocks, like those big Legos that you can chunk together. You can't make the best things out of them, but it, they work pretty good. They can make a really good wall. They can make a pretty good bridge and everything like that. Uh, Text-based coding is like using regular Legos. So it's smaller, more intricate, more details. And you can make a lot more things with it. You can make a really cool looking race of car, or you can make the Death Star or anything like that. So um, this class is a step up from CSE. Uh, we get to do some really cool things and some of my students have taken this class really far, uh, but there is a level of difficulty with it. So fair warning before you really get your toes wet. Okay, so what are the rules in this class? Make sure you're on time and you're ready to go. If you gotta use the restroom, um, see me. 
So when class starts, we'll pretty much have you guys uh, take out your Chromebooks, get logged in, get started up while I explain what you guys will be working on. Uh, use appropriate languages. Uh, I'm fine with coding. A comma missed in the wrong spot or uh, you spell the word uh, wrong or any variable, you forget a letter, uh, it will be making an error and you can't find between the 230 lines of code where the mistake came from. Uh, and you want to use some inappropriate language, but we will not do that. We will not resort to those things. Make sure your phones are away during the time. Uh, they can be distracting. They can also be helpful at times, but we're going to make sure as I teach uh, a section, go over the new concept that, that we're learning, you have those phones away. Later on, if you want to use them, that's fine. Some people need to get in a zone, listen to music, and I completely understand that. Be kind and respectful for others. Um, so if you're working on a project together and you have an idea how to start the project, but you're not the leader, let the leader decide. Um, there's more than one way to code a lot of things. And so we'll let those uh, coders do their own thing. And then no food. Um, we're gonna kind of keep our workspaces clean for several reason. We don't want any of the uh, food crumbs getting into any of the, the laptops or anything like that. So technology rules. So there are laptops in here if you would rather use those. Um, all the work that you guys do in your class, you guys can do on your Chromebook. So in this class, we will not do anything specific um, that you'll need to have a bigger computer. Everything can be web-based and can be on the Chromebook. So, uh, but if there are, I can assign those to you guys. Um, just make sure if you guys use those, um, if you have any problems with them, you let me know right away and we can uh, work out where those mistakes came from. And also do not explore during instructional time. So as you're getting your computer logged in, as you're signing in and I'm explaining what today's lesson is going to be covering, you know, talking about uh, a compounded loop or uh, a nested if statement. Um, don't be exploring, you know, other things that we aren't focused on right now. And so that would be difficult for some of you, but if you can pay attention for 10 minutes and then go explore, it should be fine. All right. So what do you need to bring to class? Make sure your Chromebook is charged and it's ready to go. It should be obvious, we'll be using it every day. Uh, paper pencils and notebooks is a good thing. Uh, we'll be doing some brainstorming, developing like that, and we'll want to write things down. Um, when we make a lot of games in this class, uh, we will actually play the game and we'll play the game several times and we'll just make a list of like, what are the rules of that game? So once we get our fundamentals of coding down, we shift to game development. It's really good that we understand all the nooks and crannies of the game so then we can code for it. So um, this class, even though it is intro to programming, we won't be on our Chromebooks all the time. Sometimes we'll just be playing a game for a while. And then the flash drive. Now, a flash drive is not necessary uh, per se. All the coding that we'll be doing is going to be a few megabytes at most. Uh, very small coding, uh, so you won't need to save them. Uh, but they do help keep things organized. If you're working on a very large project and you want to bring some other um, supplementals in, if you want to import a drive or anything like that, a flash drive is nice, but um, everything is web-based, so we really won't have to worry too much about that. Where do grades come from? So as we work, whoa, previews. As we work through uh, a unit, so say we're, we're on our games now, we're making a hangman game on Python. Uh, we will have classwork due each day. So I'll be like, okay, uh, at the beginning of the game, I want you to ask the person whether, you know, they want to play by themselves or, or, you know, their, what their name is. So we'll go through different modules throughout the game. And we'll learn all about those things too. Um, so the classwork, each step as we go through, okay, can, can the person have unlimited guesses to get it right? Okay, then the next version of the game is, can we have where they only get 10 guesses? And then can we have a version of the game that lets them know if they already guessed that letter? And then can we have a version that, you know, debugs things? What if they type in a number? Would, shouldn't that be wrong? So we'll have different versions of this game. So those will be classworks and I want to see those versions turned in. Your summative assessments will be the final version. So now we've worked on this. We've talked about the different things we could have done to make that hangman game better. Your final version is turn that in. So uh, your classwork will be, I'll be looking for just one specific version part of the test. So I'll just be looking at, right? do you have this? Do you have that? Your summative version is I'm checking the overall version. So those will be worth one points. There will be projects. So we'll get to the point where it'll be at the end of several units on say, okay, I want you guys to make this, make a, a working menu for a restaurant. Um, I will let you guys then decide the modules that you guys want to take. And so that'll be a project and we'll talk about um, web development. And then we have semester, well, just semester exams. Um, and that will be something else that we get to. 
grading is pretty straightforward. I just take the total amount of points that you have and divide it by the total amount of points possible and there's your grade. So as we work, you know, if something is a pretty short one day assignment, that's only gonna be worth a certain amount of points. But then if we have a overall unit uh, project, you know, the creation of a, a program or anything like that, that's gonna be worth more points. So I don't say like, okay, Hangman's gonna be worth 20% of the game. Uh, the turtle drawing is gonna be worth, no, it's just how many days we spend on it, it's gonna be worth more points. Uh, there will be homework in this class. So uh, make sure you guys have the technology at home to do that. So hopefully you can all take your Chromebook home and you have internet access. If you don't, make sure you guys have ways to get that. You guys will pretty much just need your Chromebook for that. So I don't expect you guys to have um, any other needs for this class uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Classwork policy, we'll go through this real quick. You will see on Canvas, the learning management system that we will use, that there are due dates for each assignment. Those due dates are the days that you should have the assignment done by, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to turn it in that day or you're going to zero on it. So we might be working on a project. I'm just going to stick to Hangman again, and I'll be looking for you to turn in the version that has unlimited guesses. So if you were getting stuck on it, you had a mistake, you couldn't find it, and you just can't turn it in that day, that's fine. You can work on that mistake, or if you see me the next day, we can get it done. Um, you can turn it in late. The last acceptance date, that's going to be a date when the whole project is going to be due. And that means any subset to that project has to be turned in before that date. So if we say projects is going to be due on next Friday, everybody's got to get the whole project done next Friday. All those little iterations beforehand have to be turned in by that date. So that's the last date to cut off. That's the last day to turn things in. And what I usually do is I have the project due on a Thursday and the last day is the Friday as we do a guided reflection over that project. So I'm having you think about, okay, working back on this project, what was something you struggled with? What, know, how did you solve your mistake or uh, things like that? So you guys will have some time to turn in those assignments, but once we get done and we're moving on to the next one, those former assignments are no longer able to turn in. Uh, you can retake and resubmit some things. So, so if you had an error that you turned in at the beginning and it worked pretty good, but you couldn't figure out that mistake and you just wanted to turn it in, but then at the end of the project, you figured out the mistake and you want to resubmit that assignment, you can feel free to do that. Always you can improve your grade that way, as long as we're still within that unit. Okay, so here's the big thing that we need to talk about uh, what's going to be new this year with everything going on in 2020. All right, so first off, we will follow the mask and social distance mandates. I am not wearing my mask right now because I am alone in this room, uh, but I will always have my mask on if you see me in here. So I will have my mask and we will have uh, social distancing going on. The desks are already spaced out. Now I do have rolly chairs. Uh, so please do not roll your chair closer to the other desk uh, to eliminate the six feet apart. Uh, we pretty much have um, several desks in here, 13, and uh, we're optimizing the space as we can. Okay, here's the another thing uh, for my personal kind of Thoughts on this, I will not be handing out any work or collecting. I don't wanna take anything from me, give it to you or vice versa. I don't wanna take anything from you, give it to me and take it back. So all printed off things will be available for you in the back of the room. Uh, they'll be sorted out by days. Um, I might have to do that a little bit differently. Actually, I'll just split the copies because some people will be here on Tuesday, some people here will be Wednesdays. Um, and those will be there for you. So if you want a copy of the notes so you can hand write on, you can grab those. I'm not going to be handing them out. They'll be in the back. I will try to print these off well in advance so they have plenty of time to just sit in the back and do their thing. All right, here's the big thing. Um, other teachers might not be doing this, but I will be doing this and I will be doing this until we are away from the hybrid model. Uh, I will not be leaving my bubble around my desk. Uh, please have the uh, common currency to respect my decision for this. Uh, I need to protect, protect myself and my family first. Uh, without getting into too much details, um, I have my own personal health problems that uh, concern me when it comes to anything uh, related to COVID. Uh, my wife has some personal health issues and um, it's something we don't wanna mess with. We have family and other friends that we look after and take care of. 
And so please respect our time during this. Um, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be hard, but I hopefully you can understand where I'm coming from. Uh, so I will not come out to you and help you out, sit next to you if you have a question. We're gonna have to learn a new way to answer that. Uh, so I will answer the questions as best I can from my desk. Now, if you ask me something or just loud enough and it's something simple and quick that I can just answer like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, you can go. You don't have to send me an email. But if something like, hey, I don't understand this, um, we can set up a Zoom session uh, to help you out. Um, I hope you understand this. We will work through it. It will become normal. It won't be too bad, but I hope you understand. Um, now, I'm excited when these hybrid model gets lifted, we can go back to something different. Um, but for right now, I need you guys to respect that. Some other things that will be new, uh, we'll have the virtual Mondays. Uh, so these days, very little work will ever be assigned on those days. Uh, my goal for those days is just to go over a weekly go. So be like, all right, uh, Tuesday, we're going to be working on this. Wednesday, we'll be working on this. Thursday, this. Friday, that. So your Mondays will be more likely a day to get caught up on anything. So if you had trouble on Thursday and Friday, you couldn't figure out, those would be the days to get caught up. So I, the only time I will ever assign anything on Monday would be like if we finished a section on Friday or Thursday, depending on when you're here, uh, to give like a, a pre-assessment. Like if I'm afraid that you might not know something or you might have covered something before, I might be like, all right, guys, um, this is what we're doing. And then can you take this optional quiz so that I'll just give you a couple points for it. Um, so the split days, the Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursday, Fridays. Uh, each day will be the same whether you're in the class or not. So I'm not going to be doing like something. It's I don't see how this work, works in math. I can see how it works better in other classes, but um, I'm not going to be like, all right, you're going to do this here, learn this assignment in class, then practice it on home on Wednesday, because that doesn't make sense for the people who are at home on Wednesday, and then they're going to come here. So assignments are going to be split. I'm going to look at my pacing that I did last year, and what I covered in one day, I'm going to split into two. So it's going to be a lot shorter. So um, each day there will be an instructional video already set up for that lesson. So if you are at home on that day, um, you can watch the video and follow the online assessment. Now, if you're here in class, I can probably, and I'm going to try different methods. Um, I can do a screencast to the projector. We can answer, we can go over things. But if you just want to sit there and watch the video like you were doing at home, that's fine with me. Um, the one thing about all these online assessments during the time, they will have unlimited retakes, so you can keep trying and trying and trying until you get things done. Um, and so that's pretty much until we take a test in here. So uh, what we're going to do next is the class to get to know you part. Usually I do this on note cards, but we're going to try something a little bit different. Uh, I want you guys to use anything that you want. Uh, so any medium, if you want to make a PowerPoint, if you want to use a Google Doc, if you want to make anything you want. A, TikTok video or something, share that to me. My email address is j underscore riz at lcsschools.net. Just tell me some things about yourself. What's your name, class period, who knows what that is right now. But uh, Who did you have uh, last year for math? So what did you take? Any of your favorite things, your movie, TV shows, things, clubs, activity, and then uh, really what, are, what do you want to do next year? So if I get a lot of people in here that want to be into a business degree, I'm going to search for more business uh, calculus examples. If I got a lot of people who want to go into engineering, I'm going to find engineering examples. So uh, just let me know if you have an idea what you want to do next year. All right, so about me, uh, my name is Justin Riz. Um, I'm originally from a small town in um, Ohio. I'm sorry, I just noticed this picture of me from uh, like Christmas last year or a while ago. Uh, and then comparing to my face now, uh, definitely the quarantine has affected the haircut. Uh, okay, I live in Canal Winchester uh, with my wife, Amanda, and we have a son, Bowie. He is three and a half, so that is a pretty old picture of him. Uh, and then we are expecting a baby boy around February 18th, and so probably comes to our concern. It obviously came to a, a complete surprise to us, and there's several reasons why, and that's why I'm really taking. Uh, we had our first uh, fur baby there, uh, Ollie. He is ten and a half years old. And he is a grumpus of a uh, mutton chihuahua type mix. I don't know. All right, so what are some things I like to do? 
Uh, some things I like to do is skateboard. I've been skateboarding since uh, 2000, so 20 years this summer. Um, I should probably be a lot better, but <laughs> I'm not. Uh, other things I like to do, I like to cook. Oh yeah, that is a picture of me doing crooked guy at the canal park, so. I like to cook, I do all the cooking at our house. Uh, my wife uh, is not the best cook at all. Uh, I always tease her because uh, first time she tried to make mac and cheese uh, when we lived together, she didn't realize you had to drain the noodles and she just let them keep boiling and thought it would, and put the cheese sauce in it, made like a mac and cheese soup, just thought it would like congeal together, but there we go. Uh, we're bit really into uh, when we got free time, which isn't that often, uh, watching TV, Netflix, and Hulu dramas. So um, Game of Thrones, super big into that. Uh, have read all the books. Hopefully Winds of Winter comes out soon. Uh, watch the show, still a fan of it, even though the last season wasn't that great. Uh, the Office, still after all these years, we just rewatched The Office. Uh, my wife and I put it on every night when we go to bed. Uh, and the last three times we finished the series, we just started back over, so it doesn't stop. And then right now we're all watching The Handmaid's Tale. Um, that show is insane. Um, and so um, usually other things I get into sports. Uh, we are season ticket holders for Ohio State football, uh, although that is not happening this year. So um, hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about me. You'll learn more as we move out, um, go throughout the year. But I'm excited um, to see what happens. I'm excited to get to know you guys, but um, I'm going to take my time, and I hope you guys respect that. All right, so best of luck. Uh, let's do this this year. We're going to have a fun year. It's going to be good. We'll make the best of it. In the video.